Bulletproof Radio, a state of high performance. What about the oxygen source, though? And this is always the, the, the concern, like how do I get pure oxygen to make ozone that I could use on my family with appropriate training? Yeah, most people, uh, so there's two different kind of, kinds of oxygen tanks. There's 540 commercial and there's 870 medical. So most people recommend getting the medical tank. It's a prescription, has the regulations of being a medical tank. Uh, but the commercial, the 540 commercial tank, you can get at Praxair or Air Gas and you don't need a prescription. So most people actually choose to do that uh, because they're rated for the same grade of oxygen. So there's not really a difference in purity by what they're rated for, but the prescription is the recommended method to go about and people generally just get a script from their doctor, go to a medical oxygen supply, and they're good to go. All right, I'm gonna completely disagree with you there. Okay. There is an absolute monopoly of disgustingness on oxygen access. The stuff is locked down harder than you could possibly imagine. You want to get a script? Okay. Oh, what are you going to tell your insurance company about why you need a script for oxygen? You're like, oh, maybe I want to do exercise with oxygen therapy. Maybe I want to do ozone. But a lot of doctors won't even write a script for a tank because they don't want to put their license at risk. Mm -hmm. There is no difference between medical oxygen and welding oxygen uh, in terms of what's in it, as far as I can ascertain. In fact, I've even gone to places where they're filling medical and welding from the same tank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, so we know it's the same, and, and then people used to say, "Oh, well, there might be some oil in, in the welding oxygen." I welded Toyota truck frames for a living for a portion of my life, not a very long portion, thankfully. I can tell you, if there's grease in your oxygen, you will not like what happens in your welder. That is not happening. So what's going on here is you can spend twenty bucks or forty bucks on an oxygen refill for welding oxygen, or you could spend a whole lot more and get exactly the same thing and have to go to a pharmacy and deal with all sorts of rigmarole. Uh, so everyone that I know of now uh, who's doing ozone therapy just buys the big affordable tanks of oxygen, puts a regulator on, and then makes pure ozone, whether they're using it even intravenously or they're using it uh, rectally or they're using it for an ozone sauna and things like that. And Or they may use a concentrator to manufacture their own oxygen which works for saunas, but probably not for internal use. Yeah, it's probably not ideal to use a concentrator just because you're going to get 95% purity, but you're yeah. not going to get the 99.9% .9 purity, yeah. which is going to be a bit better if you're doing, especially if you're doing anything with veins or blood. Yeah, do not use a concentrator. No. Uh, absolutely. And at home, it's not appropriate to do ozone in your blood. It, this is just one of those things where it's a called a home remedy where you do this. I, I mean, I've I've seen it over and over with my kids and with me where I say, you know, I really didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to have to take antibiotics, but for skin infections and for problems with the gut, it's the strongest thing I've ever seen.